you are with Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, Medical Director of Biocare Hospital. And just about once a week or something like that, I like to sit down and talk with you through this podcast. You can also get it on a blog if you want to read about it and uh, learn about few things that I think are critical for our well-being and function. And today I'm going to talk about something that is a question that I find very frequently in my professional life. Not exactly that people ask me what is this or how it works, it's rather the opposite. We don't think of it, we don't pay any attention to it, and for the same reason, we cannot take care of it. And today I want to talk about the immune system. Immunity is a word that's everywhere. You just have to turn on the TV, read a magazine, uh, get some sort of information, talk to your friends. Uh, right now, after two years of pandemic, uh, we all remember that there was uh, common lingo. We were talking about it every day. And we all talk about immunity. We were all every day saying that, well, he, he was very strong immunologically speaking, or he was very weak immunologically speaking. And we, we're talking very frequently that this uh, supplement, for example, is very good for your immune system. This type of food is very good for your immune system. This type of whatever is good for your immune system. But what is exactly the immune system? And the question is very important because the first thing you have to have in order to help your immune system to really be behind it, to really be able to support it and, and enhance it and boost it, is to understand what the immune system is. So let me use some of the analogies I use very frequently to try to explain you what the immune system is. We have a body. We have given a body that is a very complex organism within. And at the same time, is filled, really filled, with very important substances. Substances that a lot of things around us would love to have them. I mean, if, if, if you sit a polar bear next to me, Mm, she's going to think I'm yummy and eat me. Okay, but that's extreme. But on my everyday life, because I, I, I don't think anybody's going to bring a polar bear, but on my everyday life, as I breathe, as I eat, as I talk, as I walk on the street, as I jump in a car or, 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 or public transportation, etc., I'm going to be meeting and encountering a lot of smaller things that will surely love to have a feast with everything that's in my body. And that's the microbial world. Microbes would love to take care of it, to be able to use everything that's within us. And given the chance, we have seen it, it is going to produce colonies and grow and give you uh, diseases, etc., and, uh, and eat, literally eat your tissues away. And uh, you all have heard about gangrene and uh, this is uh, a streptococcus that it's a meat eater, etc. So there are a lot of things around us that would love to be in this body of ours and use everything it has. Let's think of a, of a very rich country. And we have seen it throughout history. If you were a small little town, village, somewhere <coughs> in the middle of nowhere, nobody would attack you. But what if you were a prosperous society with a good civilization, with lots of crops, with 
lots of gold with lots of wealth. Of course, everybody is going to be looking at those assets and try to seize them. We've seen it through history that Rome, for example, would embark in huge expeditions to conquer those lands, to conquer those harvests, to conquer those ports, to etc., etc. We've seen it. So throughout history, what we have done in these countries, in these societies, in these civilizations, <coughs> we have looked for ways to defend ourselves, to block intruders, and in the case they happen to come in, be able to beat them, to destroy them, so we can reconquer our well-being, our, our whole body and everything. That is what the immune system is. Except that the immune system is so much more complicated. I could tell you, without any doubt, that if you were going to put the National Guard, the CIA, the uh, Home Security uh, Department, the Army, the whole Pentagon, together to try to protect our country, you're very close to figuring out what the immune system can do for you. And how many departments and how many different ways to approach the problem you can have. Because what the, CEA, the CIA does is very different from what the army does. However, the two of them complement each other because one is going to have intelligence information, is going to tell you what they think the other guys are trying to do, etc., etc. But the, the, the army is going to get ready and prepared to physically attack or block the attack of any foreign aggressor. That's what happens in the body. That is what the immune system is. It's very complex. And it's very different one part from the other. One could be a molecule, the other could be a cell, the other could be a whole organ. And a big part of the immune system is not even part of our own body, which is the intestinal flora. It's not even a human cell. But these are our allies. I mean, you cannot have a proper defense if you didn't have any allies. They are very important. And in our case, that's the bacteria, the living forms like, like, that peacefully share our lives, live with us, and help us to prepare a lot of things from antibodies and cells to training, etc. That is what the immune system is. So the next time you think of immunity, you have to think of a very complex group of functions, organs, cells, activities within the body that are designed to do exactly that, to protect you. How they're going to protect you? Like in the same way that the whole defense system of America, for example, works, from surveillance, to having spies, to getting intelligence, etc., to the actual fight and defense and, and, and destruction of the enemy. It can go from A to Z. And of course, for one, you need a spy, for, for the other, you need a soldier. And that's exactly what happens in the body. You have a lot of things. You have molecules. You have cellular structures. You have specific cells to do one thing or that other one or the next one. And you have whole organs that are going to be dedicated to produce these cells, to equip these cells, to train these cells so they can be very efficient. The same way we recruit soldiers, we 
train them, we give them uniform, you, we equip them, and we give them the tools to be able to do their job successful. That is exactly what the immune system is. So next time you think of, I have a good immune system, you have to think a lot further. You have an excellent, complex, very efficient system to detect, to know what's going on, to differentiate self from non-self. This is recognizing an intruder from something that it is not, that's a normal uh, part of our body, and to fight head-on against whatever comes our way. And that could be a virus, that could be a bacteria, that could be anything. So we're able to fight back, to heal, to restructure everything the way it was, to restore totally any structure that our body has so we can continue to live on, to move on with our lives without any distress, without any, many times even without any memory. I see it uh, time and time again. You talk to people and you say, have you had any serious diseases? No, no, doctor, I have been healthy all my life. Uh, appendicitis, tonsillitis. Oh, yeah, yeah, now that you mention it, yes, uh, I had a appendix, uh, appendectomy when I was 12, or I had a car accident, I broke a bone when I was 15, or... My mother says that when I was a small kid, uh, I had pneumonia and was very sick for some time. I even went to the hospital. But by now you forgot it. Because your body has repaired so well itself, so well, that you move on with your life, not only without any consequence, not even memory of what happened. It is the doctor's duty to dig in and try to know to find out if there are any possible weaknesses within your body or strengths in this case because if everything went so well that means that you have a healthy strong immune system and we have to this to discover how it works and how we can truly support it so stay with me because this is information that will help you and those you love. You are with Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, Medical Director of Biker Hospital. And I wanted to talk to you about something that to me is very important. And it is very important, not because you know about it or you don't know about it, it's because I want you to understand it. Because we all know that, of course, we're alive. We all know that we can repair a lot of things. We all know that we can come back to health when we were sick. And we all know that we have this thing within that protects us from foreign invasions. And that is the immune system. We all know about it. We talk about it every day. Uh, it's everyday conversation. I don't think it goes one week when you don't mention immunity, particularly in times of uh, flu epidemics or, or in, of course, two years of pandemic, brought our attention to the, to the subject in, in a big way because we all noticed that some people were handling it very well. I mean, you, you, you almost, when, uh, you, you cannot believe it. You see people that turn out to be COVID positive and but they look so well. And they said, well, I had this little problem. I didn't get some smell for 
two or three days, everything came back, and or I had a little bit of discomfort, that's it. And everything went by. More important, there are people where COVID was present and they didn't even know they had it. That's how mild it was. But in some people, we saw that it were uh, a, a lot more problems. They had a lot more uh, symptoms. They had much more than just discomfort. They had a, a low saturation of oxygen. They didn't feel good. They had headaches. They had fever, etc., etc. And some people got so sick that they had to go to a hospital and be helped with, with huge amounts of oxygen and uh, breathing machines, etc. And those that just couldn't make it, couldn't handle it. And we all know that the difference is where the immune system stood at the time of the onset of the disease. So we learn that immunity is very important and it can be the difference between life and death. So what exactly we're talking about? I was telling you that this is like putting together the CIA, the National Guard, the whole Pentagon, the Home Security uh, Department, etc., in one single group of entities that are, their goal is to protect our country from any foreign invasion. That's exactly what the immune system is. And I was using the combination of all these agencies because the immune system is not one thing. The immune system is a very complex group of functions that go from surveillance to head-on attack on, the, on, on whatever is the intruder. Let's begin with the first things that the body does. The first things that our body does is, you know, we have blood, blood circulates through the whole body, and we have in that, in the blood, a number of substances and cells, remember white blood cells, and white blood cells are not created equal. We're going to talk about that in a minute but they have different functions. Nevertheless, let me tell you grossly that all these substances, all these cells circulate through the body the same way like the police department patrols your city. They're just going around and talking and one to the other and how's, you go, how's your day going and so forth, where you're going to have lunch, what are you going to do, are you going to have vacation, blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you've seen it on movies, when two guys in the patrol car are having a very casual conversation. However, there could be a point where they say, hey, watch that. What's that? That car has funny license plates. You see that? And they check the license plate. And for sure they find out that the license, license plate does not correspond to the car. And then they start looking at it. And they call the police department and they say, look, we have this car. And the, and the guy says, oh, you know what? That car has been reported. It's been stolen. It was used in a robbery. So they approach the car. They, they take a look. And sure enough, somebody comes out, gets in the car, and they go and detain him. And they find out that this guy is the one that actually went in the bank robbery. And he stole the car to do that. And to these guys, they think he changed the plates. How did this happen? Because you had guys going around the town who know the town and who are trained. This is very important. They have to be trained to detect abnormal behavior. And they have a lot of tools. They have computers. They have cameras. They can connect to databases. They have a lot of things. Well, those are our white blood cells. And we have what we call antibodies. 
substances that are going to circulate in the blood and they don't do anything, they're happy doing their thing, but every so often they find a substance they have never seen before. And they tell the cells, you know, I saw that thing, what are we going to do? And these white cells are going to produce antibodies. They say, how's the molecule? What is a square? Okay, make a square antibody. And that square antibody goes, grabs the square thing that we didn't know uh, as, 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 a, as a self thing and gets out of the circulation. Exactly as the police department of your hometown is. They're trained groups of people to create surveillance and in case of need to detain or to tag or to follow or to chase whatever they think is an abnormal activity. And in the process, of course, you get some disruptions. I mean, if you have a car, a, a car chase, well, you might be hitting other cars, you might be getting some problems. The same happens in the body. As the white cells start attacking some other cells, or as they start producing a lot of antibodies and so forth, you might feel some something. How many times have you gone, for example, somewhere and you come back and you say, mm, I don't feel well. It, well, it was cold last night and, or probably I, I ate something I shouldn't. And so, forth. so I had some discomfort. I don't feel good because there's some byproducts that are the consequence of uh, or the, the side effects of, of whatever immunity uh, systems produced and you don't feel well but after a little while everything goes away and you forget about it. That's the way these, these antibodies and these cells work. So they can go and look and make sure that everything is as usual, that everything is absolutely normal that they don't find any foreign substance, that they don't find any foreign thing. That's actually what allergies are. When pollen starts to come out in the, in the atmosphere and we breathe it in, well, antibodies are not really used to, to, to this pollen, so they start giving some activity that it it can produce some side effects and you know them, some teary eyes, some sneezing, some discomfort, etc. Or nothing. It depends on what is the level of sensitivity of your immune system. If it's normal, well, it shouldn't give you a lot of problems. If it is low, you might not even feel anything, but sometimes it's very active. And we're going to explain what happens when the immune system gets uh, hyperactive. It should be active, but just to a certain level. No more than that, because then the side effects could be a lot bigger. So all these things show you that you have an immune system that's well and alive. So don't attack it. That would be my lesson number one, and we're going to talk about that, how you can control it, how you can help it, and how you can tame it, because sometimes we will have to do that. But it's very important that you understand it. It's very important that you know that not only uh, an intruder, sometimes, the same as in your hometown, you might have someone misbehaving. It's not a foreign thing. It's just somebody that's misbehaving. Like this bank robber. He might be your neighbor. He's doing things he shouldn't do. So for all practical purposes, he's a criminal. And he's going to go to jail, probably. Well, the same thing happens. Some cells do things they shouldn't do. They degenerate and they can create disease. And these cells are going to be detected and attacked and destroyed by the immune system. And those cells, those abnormal behaving cells, could be a cancer cell. Actually, it is considered that we produce cancer cells 
every so often. But our immune system, once it detects them, it goes after them because they are considered not to be self cells because their genetic and their uh, metabolic characteristics change so much that the body starts looking at them as something that shouldn't be there. And what they do is they go and help that cell to either self-destroy apoptosis or simply go and destroy them. People ask me many times when they have a bad diagnosis, they say, doctor, why did I get cancer? And my question has always been, why do we live so many years cancer-free? And when you find a cancer, it's because something happened to that immune system that should have been taken care of you. So you can figure out how important the health of your immune system is. So stay with me. We have to talk about that too. The subject is the immune system. I am Rodrigo Rodriguez, medical director of Biker Hospital. So we're talking about something so important for our survival for our well-being and even though we talk about it every so often very few people really understand what the immune system does or how it is structured and how it can do so many different things and at the same time how it can create so many different problems because it's a very complex system it's like putting a lot of defense systems together from uh, intelligence to uh, surveillance to preparedness to action. So it is so complex that it can produce a lot of different uh, functions in the body that complement each other and that makes human life possible. You and I are alive in spite of the constant threats that come from all our surroundings. In the air, in the food, in the water we drink, in the in just about everything, you have bacteria and mic microbes that would love to have our body, that would love to, to create a nest and, and eat out of whatever we have, or, 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 or whatever resources we have in our body. And then we have an immune system. And that immune system is looking for possible uh, uh, break-ins. Uh, if you have a little cut, if you eat the wrong thing, if you breathe something you should not, or if you get in your body something you shouldn't get in your body, Okay, so with all those things, the body has to always be in constant alert, day and night, 24-7. It cannot rest. It has to look for abnormal activity to be able to correct the problem so you continue to live without any consequence. Well, it happens to be that that immune system is very good because it was really created in perfection. But how, we, how can we train the immune system? How can we show the immune system what to do? Because the same as soldiers, when we produce white blood cells, you don't have a soldier. The same is when you have a child, that person is not a soldier. He'll have to grow up, he'll have to get a degree of maturity, and then it has to be trained. Training is very important. They have to go to West Point in order to learn, in order to have a good idea about uh, tactics and 
strategy and, and all these things that uh, I'm sure military schools show. They have to learn how to use a weapon. They have to know how to defend themselves. They have to know, you, you always see them like creeping on the ground, uh, etc. They have to be physically fit. Uh, and, and all those things we have seen in movies. But it has to be a lot more complex than what we simply watch in a movie. It's a lot of hard work together with a lot of uh, smart, intelligent decisions. And that's what white blood cells do. White blood cells are created, they start circulating, they start functioning, and they have to go to school. Where do you go to school? Well, it turns out that the biggest population of immune cells in the body is in the bowel. It's in the gut. Why? Because the gut is in constant contact with the outside world through things that come in uh, throughout, without food and uh, things we swallow, swallow saliva, etc. We're bringing a lot of things into the body. So white blood cells in the gut are trained by the bacteria in the gut about what is around. If we eat certain bacteria with the food or if we breathe something and so on, this bacteria will let you know, you know, there is this happening and they can also check, that's very important, the, 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 the gut can check if they're good or bad. And if they're bad, they'll show you immediately disagreement. You eat something that doesn't agree with you, that's the word we use, but that's, it's our intestinal bacteria that say, wait a minute, what is this? Get rid of it. And it goes one way or the other, but out of the body. And you say, I probably ate something, but I was vomiting and had diarrhea, and finally it stopped, and everything went back to normal. Why did it stop? Because that thing is finally out of your body. But that information is transferred to the white blood cells. So your white blood cells now know that this thing is bad. So they start creating antibodies, they start creating cell activity, they're trying to get enzymes that are going to destroy that thing. So, if that happens again, your response is going to be faster and more effective. It happens also with the things we breathe. Our body can train white blood cells to substances in the air. So many times we don't have any symptoms. We feel good, we don't notice anything. And there is, you get a visit from abroad people that come to visit you for a week and so on, and they start with teary eyes and coughing and so forth. You say, what do you have? I don't know, I'm reacting to something. Why they react and you don't? Because you live in the same place, you live in your own environment, your white blood cells already know that whatever is coming in is the pollen from the peach tree or from something that's in your backyard. They're used to it. So they're don't react. But this person that came from God knows where might not find them that friendly and will start developing a lot of symptoms. That is also one of the reasons why when we travel, we tend to have either respiratory or gastrointestinal uh, discomfort because we're going to encounter a different type, a different population of bacteria and and, and allergens or, or whatever it is. So our body is not used to them, it has to get used to them, and uh, it's going to take some time, but by the time everything happens, you might be going, going back to your house and, and, and go back to normality. But we get used to allergens and to substances in our own backyard, and they do not affect us at all, because 
our intestinal flora, our white blood cells, and so on, have learned that that is a normal part of your whole environment. So nothing is going to happen. So you say, well, that is beautiful. What can go wrong? How come all of a sudden we encounter ourselves in the middle of, of a pandemic and people were dying with very poor immune systems? Well, the answer can be a lot simpler than what it, you might think. Because we didn't support. Because we didn't understand our, 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 our immune system. Because we didn't help it, because we didn't boost it. And why is that? Because we have to, again, understand that our well-being depends of, on what sort of care, what sort of bio-care we have for our body. If we don't provide our body with the proper vitamins or, or minerals or trace minerals or essential fatty acids, etc., 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 the immune system is not going to work well. The same way as the army. You have an excellent army, but you don't give them tires for the aircraft, you don't give them fuel for the tanks, you don't give them weapons to the fighters. What can they do? So you have to make sure that every day, every morning, you decide you're going to do something to support your immune system. And the first and simplest is don't do things that are going to harm it. So cigarette smoking is definitely out of the question. And be very careful with alcohol. And be very careful with chemical substances. Because we don't know. I'm not saying that they're necessarily bad. But we don't know how they can affect you. My grandmother would tell you it's bad. Period. Well, don't do things you're not sure they're not going to work on your behalf. That's by care. Okay, you don't put a, a cigarette butt in your in the in, in the plant you love, and you don't give bad food to the dog you love. The same thing. Be careful with your body with bio care. Take care of it in the best possible way, and then make sure you produce good food, you give it good water, you give it a lot of relaxation, uh, and, and so on. Stress damages the immune system. That's why many people can develop serious diseases after stressful times, after the death of a loved one, after losing things. Uh, disease can set in because the immune system gets depressed. So what would happen if in your hometown, all of a sudden, uh, policemen were just sleeping and not caring about anything, not keeping an eye open to see what's happening? You're going to see criminal activity go up. It's the same way. You have to, to be happy. Believe it or not, happiness will bring a lot of uh, good immune activity. So go out and exercise and move and eat well. Everything you do for your body, which is bio carrying your body, all that is going to reflect on your immune system. And the stronger your immune system is, the better everything is going to work for you. So don't disregard any of these things. Don't think that they will just happen. Don't trust that, oh, uh, I can have my cake and eat it too. Take care of your body. Take care of your immunity. And you're going to get a big return. Huge return. But we still have to, to close up this conversation with things we can really do for you. We're talking about the immune system. And what I wanted to do with this conversation that I very much appreciate you having 
you may uh, in your car or in your living room listening to this to this uh, uh, blog I, I want to tell you that uh, my main goal is to try to help you understand how complex and what is the role of the immune system because if you do you're going to begin to help it you're going to begin to know where you can intervene to support it to help it and to boost it because we all need a strong immune system and that immune system will not uh, it, it was given to us but it is up to us to keep it in good shape so we have to know that a lot of the things that we do can affect it I was talking about for example about stress stress is very damaging to the immune system uh, I have always thought that chronic stress can be considered a precancerous condition. I have seen so many people with cancer that was preceded by long stressful or deep stressful conditions because your immune system goes down, because your body doesn't react the same way. So whatever stress you have in your life is something you have to learn to manage. You have to learn to get rid of it. And ultimately, you have to think that whatever is stressing you, stresses you is not worth your life. And when we are going through periods of long, deep stress, many times it could cost us our lives. So try to to get out of it. Try to get some comfort. Try to look for spiritual help. Try to look for professional help. Try to do anything about it in order to be able to reduce the load, the burden of chronic stress. Talk it over with people. It is very important to know that when we are under a lot of stress, Every word you tell a good friend is a few grams, few ounces of weight that get off your back. So talk about it. Look for people you trust, for people you love, talk to your priest, talk to your uh, friend, talk to someone, but get it out of your life. Stress is very harmful, okay? and it can cost you your life, I have to tell you again. Other thing we can do is get toxic substances in our lives. That is also very damaging. Cigarette, smoking, it has no way to get one good thing from it. And one of the things that are for sure is the fact that it is going to depress and damage your immune system. No wonder cigarette smokers have a lot more cancer rate not only long you name it choose your cancer yes that is going to enhance by cigarette smoking too no matter where the cancer is of course lung cancer is probably the most obvious but it could be in your tongue could be in your gas and your gi tract could be in any organ for that matter so do not smoke and do not smoke passively. Try to avoid places with a lot of smoke. And when I say cigarette smoke, I would include also toxic environments where you have bad quality air and so on. So make sure you, you are in a well-ventilated area in a, in, in, with better quality air, etc. And, and be concerned about it. Because that's like taking care of the environment where you have your, your plants. You, you might have house plants that you love. Well, you, you, you check that the heat is not really high up, that the watering is good, that the sunlight is perfect, etc. The same thing. 
Make sure that the whole environment where you work, remember you spend a lot of, a lot of hours at work. So make sure you have good quality air, good quality lighting, uh, a relaxed position and so forth. Stand up every 30 minutes, walk a little bit around. Uh, don't ask people to give you a copy from the copier. Get up and bring it yourself. Uh, move because physical activity, once again, it's very important. And make sure you eat right. You know, I just found uh, a person in Spain that founded uh, a platform that's called uh, Fooding, Real Fooding. Fooding, like food, F-O-O-D, ING. Real fooding is very simple. It only says that everything you put in your mouth has to come from real food. That means no cans, no envelopes, no foils, no boxes, no nothing. Just go and buy real food. And that's going to help you a lot. It helps you to know it is now that the statistics are accumulating, that people that say that they normally tend to prefer organic foods over other type of food are actually living longer with less disease than normal population. So it seems that yes, it is going to pay. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. But now we have figures that can prove that yes, it is true. Eat real food. We need all we need supplements because even if you eat right agricultural methods and seeds alone and and genetic manipulation etc is here to stay and we have to make sure that we have all the things that we need vitamin d was proven to be one of the keys during the covid uh, uh, epidemic people with low vitamin d levels uh, they had lower immunity activity. So vitamin D is vital for a good level of immune activity, let alone that it's going to prevent osteoporosis, let alone that's going to enhance protein synthesis, strength, and muscle stability. For those of us that are aging, you know that uh, muscle stability is very important. Well, that can come with vitamin D, so make sure you are healthy. But let me tell you in closing that something that we have dealt with for many years actually was the reason why BioCare Hospital was born is because we knew we could help a lot of people by doing what we believed in by making sure we can, we could feed people appropriately, that we could detoxify a lot of the things that have polluted someone's life, that we could replace in a very targeted way that mineral, that vitamin, that essential substance that that body of that person was needing because it had been low for many, many years. And not only we could do it, but because we were in a hospital, we could replace it in record time. Because we could use intravenous routing, we could use rectal administration, we could do a lot of things that in, in, a, in, a, in a doctor's office you cannot do. We are in a hospital and we could do a lot of these things. Let me tell you that also when we started all this, we knew that oxidative therapies like oxygen, uh, hyperbaric oxygen, ozone, can bring a lot of well-being by helping to control abnormal uh, flora, abnormal microbial infections, many times undetected by, by uh, even clinicians or, or doctors, because they were so low, it produced so many little symptoms, nevertheless, a lot of discomfort, because people could not sleep, because people didn't feel well, because people had uh, 
energy loss. That's why they call it fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome and so forth. So we knew all that could be connected to the immune system. And we wanted an immune system. So by putting together all these modalities, we were going to go one step further, one step further. And then incorporating the, the health of the intestinal flora. Remember that the intestinal flora is mainly created by bacteria, and bacteria are vegetable cells. So think of your, of your intestinal flora like a garden. If you have a, a garden with a problem, well, you can use fertilizers, you can use a lot of things. Uh, there could be the time where you need to replace the whole thing and bring a new sod. All that can be done in a hospital environment. We can support your intestinal flora, we can help the friendly part of your flora, we can help you manage and eventually get rid of the bad part of your intestinal flora, we can help you to support all that because we know it's going to go to be the basis of the training, of the quality of the white blood cells and immunity your body is going to develop. So by putting all those things together, we know we can help you a lot. And many times, I think it really pays to say, I'm going to give my body a break. I'm going to give my body a gift. I'm going to invest 10 days of my life in a place where I'm going to help to rebuild and to restructure everything we need. Because I know my body can do it. I know my body wants to do it. Every single part of your body always tends to go toward healing. It just needs the tools. And the tools, you're going to have find them in Biocur. You're going to be in a stress-free, friendly environment where everybody understands what I'm talking about and everybody will help you to support your plan. And I can tell you that in 10 days, 2 weeks, you're going to live, go, live here very happy you did it. My most common comment from people at Biocare is I wish I would have known about it before. Till next time, I'm Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez with Biocare Hospital.